What is up guys, I hope you're all doing well today, and welcome to Gearing for Dummies. And by that I mostly mean beginners. But hopefully throughout this guide, I'll be able to give some tips that'll help even those of you that have been playing for a little bit, just have an easier time gearing, or just having some guidance as to what things might be worth looking for, or what you should be doing when, and just some general purpose information to help you have a smoother time. So before we just dive right into it, I do want to disclaimer that this is mostly just my personal preference and how I do things, what I've discovered works best for me and what I think. I'm not giving you a, this is the best way to do everything or, you know, insert mega clickbait ultimate build guide title junk here. This is just some general guidelines that have helped me through gearing and have helped me have a good time leveling up my characters and playing through Diablo 4. So let's dive into it. So we're going to start this assuming that you were very early on in your first character playing through the story mode. And leveling through the story mode and gearing up in there is fairly straightforward. Honestly, almost the whole time you're playing through the story, you can pretty much just look at gear, and if it has the green plus symbol, green means go. It's stronger, it's got more raw stat, just use it. Almost always it'll work fine, it'll be stronger gear, and you'll just kind of slowly get better and better pieces as you go through the story, and the different substats will help or not help and won't really matter all that much. So, through the story, green means go. The only caveat to that is something that can be fairly helpful, is if you're using a character, you've got some skills you enjoy using, and I wouldn't say you have a build going yet, but main skills that you like to throw around and blast mobs. You can take a quick look at rare gear, which is the yellows, just to see if there's something like this one where plus two ranks to blight. Blight is a skill I'm using, so this gear piece might be decent, might be a little bit worse than what you have, whatever, but plus two to a skill or even one to a skill is a fairly decent boost in damage. So something with plus skills is decent while leveling, so don't be afraid to grab one of those instead of strictly adhering to the green means go, as extra damage can be much stronger than a little bit of extra armor, for example on the gloves. And then helmets can also roll some plus skills, usually more utility based, and then pants can also roll some plus skills as you see here ranks of corpse explosion that's another one i'm using so even though this is a bit under leveled right now i haven't found a better one and i like that plus to the skill i'm using so another little tip to know while leveling is you will start finding legendaries and you might be very tempted to start grabbing and throwing a lot on legendaries so let's take this legendary effect for example damaging an elite enemy grants you a barrier Absorbing up to 884 damage for 10 seconds. This effect can only happen once every 30 seconds. That's a nice little bonus. It can be really helpful in big fights with elites, just making you more tanky, giving you that overshield of a barrier. And this might be really helpful to you. You really like this. You throw this on. It's great. You're having a great time. Well, after a while, this piece of gear, especially during the story mode, is going to fall off really quickly. As you can see here, this one's a level 25, and if this was a more important piece of gear, the stats on this would just be so low that it would be really hard to hold on to it just for that effect. And so you might go in and say, well, I can just take this legendary aspect off, put it on a new shield that's a little stronger, and just keep going forward. Well, something worth knowing is... The legendary aspects that you get on dropped gear have a range of rolls. As you can see on this one here, that barrier can be anywhere from 465 all the way up to 930. And I do believe this changes a little bit based on level, but for the most part, just those two numbers are the most important. And so as you can see, the one I rolled is 884. That's a pretty darn high roll. And if I just throw this on a piece of gear that's a couple levels higher than when I got it, that's kind of wasted, because that piece of gear that you put this on is also going to probably get phased out very quickly going through the story while you're leveling, and you cannot take the legendary aspects back off and use them again. So what I would suggest is, if there's an effect like this that you like, use that piece of gear as long as you can if it has a good roll. 
And when you need to replace that piece of gear, what I'd recommend doing is going into your collection and seeing if you can get that aspect through one of the dungeons. So this one's a little higher, I think, because of my level. But the aspects from the dungeons will always roll at the lowest possible amount. But the dungeon aspects can be used as many times as you like. So if you liked that effect, keep using the codex aspect instead of pulling the one off the piece of gear you found and save that really high roll for something a little further down the line that you might hold on to a bit longer. That way you're not wasting these. And some of these effects do drop pretty consistently, so it's it's not overly strict. Don't feel like you've messed up horribly if you happen to break one down and use the aspect sooner. It's not the end of the world, especially with some of the more generic aspects, because even at base level through the codex, they're pretty strong. So it's not a huge deal. I just like to hold on to strongly rolled ones and use them on a bit stronger gear. And something else to keep in mind dealing with the aspects again through the story mode leveling process is that jewelry does not have a like primary main stat. So, you know, the gear has armor rating and both your weapon and offhand generally have damage. Because the jewelry does not have a main stat, all you're worrying about is the substats. So this means you don't have to be replacing this nearly as regularly as regular gear and weapons and offhands. So if you find, say, this ring, uh, damage over time, that's nice for me, damage to distant, that works for me, physical damage is not good for me, critical strike is okay, but having several substats that work well for me, I may not dump this ring very early, even if it's a lower level, as mine is right here being a 41 and I've just moved up to 50. So during the story mode, if you find a ring or a necklace that has a bunch of substats that work well with what you have, that is a good place to put a aspect that you think you're gonna wanna use regularly or for the end game build, you know, something you're gonna wanna hold on to for a long time because you like to use that skill. These jewelry slots can be a good place to put those because you'll hold on to them a lot longer. And this would be a place where, say, you could put this aspect on that one, but uh, jewelry and rings can only have, I believe, it's utility and attack type aspects. But say this could go on there, and you wanted this aspect for sake of example, you could put this aspect on the rings or amulet. Because you would hold on to it a lot longer, you would run less of a risk of having wasted that stronger rolled aspect. So that's just another little tip to do with those. And one last thing for leveling just through the story mode, which is something I have still done here if you haven't noticed already, is pretty much only worry about ever upgrading your weapon, especially if you don't have a whole bunch of reserves of materials from having played on multiple characters or anything like that. You're not going to have tons of material early on, and so don't just go upgrading willy-nilly every piece of gear you get because you're going to burn through a lot of gold and a lot of resources, and then when you get something nice, you're not going to have what you need. So I'd recommend only upgrading main hand and off hand, unless you're using a two-handed, of course, because you're going to get a lot of raw damage doing that, and that can make a huge difference while leveling, making it more comfortable, blasting mobs faster, yada yada. The little bit of extra armor for the upgrading armor pieces, and the little bit of stats through upgrading jewelry, though nice, isn't a huge deal early on, so I wouldn't particularly worry about wasting resources doing that. Just upgrade your main hand and off hand, blast more mobs, get through the story, you'll be good to go. And those few things will pretty much carry you till around level 45 to 50. Close to the end it might get a little bit trickier if you have, don't have really good gear, but it should be pretty easy to just blaze through the story mode following those few things. All right, so now we're going to move on to going into world tier three. You've beaten the story mode. You've got the open world. You're doing all that fun stuff. You go manage to beat the capstone dungeon to unlock world tier three. Now, you may have to pay a little more attention to your gear in order to beat the capstone dungeon. So the following guide for doing this section can kind of be applied to beating the capstone as well, other than sacred gear which is something we'll talk about in just a moment, but just keep in mind what I'm about to talk about 
can help you beat this to unlock world tier 3. It's kind of a weird spot while leveling where if you're not really strong it'll be hard to get tier 3 where you start getting major upgrades. But getting to that to get the upgrades can be a little bit rough just depending on build and what you have going for you at the moment. So let's get into this section. So as soon as you unlock world tier 3 you're going to start finding sacred items. Sacred items just very simply have better stats, they're higher level. You basically just want to start replacing everything you get with sacred items because the raw stats are going to be just that much better and they only get better as you level up. So it might be hard to part with say, so with this item here having the plus two ranks to blight, I might have a little hard time swapping that out for another sacred but if I found one with some stats I wanted or even a plus one or if I got really lucky, another plus two to Blight. That would be an easy swap, but generally, swap over to Sacred, it's just better. So moving into the Sacred gear is when I'm going to start looking for two substats that directly help me. What you're going to see is Sacred Rare Boots like this. We'll use a different item, for example, that shows it better, but that's how it'll look. It'll be Sacred, and it'll be a higher level than probably the stuff you've been using. But we're going to take my gloves because they fit what I'm talking about better. Let's say for sake of this that these are a sacred item and they are showing green. They're a little bit stronger in the raw armor stat than the ones I've been using. I would roll down and start looking at the substats. 15% overpower damage. I'm not doing anything overpower, so that's a negative. That doesn't do anything good for me. I look down again. Two ranks to Blight. Well, I'm using Blight. So that's just more damage and a substat that is a net positive for me. It's always effective and always helping. It's not situational. It's not a side thing like some resistances or something weird. It directly helps me all the time. And then going down again, plus 21 to intelligence. Well, let's see, depending on character, that'll be different. But for me, intelligence is the main stat being a necromancer. So my skill damage is going to be increased by intelligence. So that is two net positives or two good substats. And that is an item I would take. If it only had one good substat, I'd really have to compare to what I have already. But for an easy swap, sacred, higher raw stat, which would be the armor or on main hand offhand that would be the damage green main stat two good substats i swap it out and use that some other good stats here will be damage reduction from close or damage reduction from distant that can be another way you can stack more of that damage reduction uh, i think damage reduction from distant is probably a little better just because damage from close is basically what you can reach with an auto attack, such as the Barb's Frenzy, just something that hits right in front of you, not very far away. So it doesn't cover a lot of area, as where damage reduction from distant would be anything past that. So if this candle was damage from close, all of the rest of the screen here would be damage from distant, which means that you get a lot more effectiveness out of damage from distance. So that can be a pretty good defensive stat. The percentage resistances such as lightning fire, all that kind of stuff, they're pretty bad. I'm, they help if you get them. It's nothing to cry about, but they're definitely not worth trying to get. This isn't anything like Diablo 2 or Path of Exile where you want to keep your resistances capped. They work totally different, and you get a lot more return on the just flat damage reductions. So I definitely don't recommend trying to get element resistances if you can help it. And then as far as on the weapon and offhand, this is where it'll be a little more situational. So there's a lot of different damage multipliers. Damage to slow, to critical strikes, damage to close, damage over time, damage to stun, vulnerable, damage to crowd controlled. There's going to be a lot of different ones, and it's kind of hard to tell you exactly what is best for you because every build, different skills, there's going to be a lot of things that determine what is best for you. So I will simply try to tell you what is best for me so you get an idea of how it works. So I use a very simple setup, which I will base this on, which is using corpse tendrils, which I use on a corpse. It shoots out, grabs things, pulls them all into the center, and because of the final tier node I took on it, all of the enemies pulled are made vulnerable. 
So vulnerable is something that I will very reliably apply to enemies when I'm doing my skill rotation. So if I were to roll plus 23% damage to vulnerable enemies, that would be a good stat because that is an effect that I will regularly be placing on enemies. Therefore, I will regularly benefit from that damage bonus. Another thing I apply is Blight, which has a damage over time, I believe. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of complications over whether damage over time stat counts for some of the dark stuff with the Necromancer, but for this, let's assume it does function as you would think it does. I do a lot of ground effects that do a, uh, air quotes, dot damage, and so we'll say this affects it. That would be a second good stat, because I do damage over time with most of my effects. Therefore, the 15% damage over time would be a net positive. Uh, some of the other damage over times would be bleeding from the barb, uh, poisons, and things like that. So you really have to look at what you're doing skill-wise, what effects you place regularly, and then decide which of these stats you want to look for. But I apply the same thing to the offhand and main hand that I do to gear, where main stat better, that's good. Two good substats, I swap out for that next tier of item. So hopefully that wasn't too much for you to follow. Uh, it is a little complicated once you actually start working with it and once you kind of know the skills you're using, knowing what stats are good does start to come a little more naturally. So don't get overwhelmed if you are brand new to this. It's really not that bad and you'll slowly learn it as you progress through the game and it's nothing to stress about too much. So now that you've moved on to, let's say, mostly sacred gear or all sacred gear and you're in world tier 3 having a good time, now is a good time to also maybe start using some of those stronger rolled aspects, kind of like I was talking about before, where you don't want to waste the high rolled ones, such as this barrier one here. But now is a time that it would be safer to use those, because Sacred Gear is obviously stronger, and you will replace it with the next tier later. But you may end up spending a fair bit of time in this Sacred Area, or having a hard time replacing a Sacred Piece, depending on how good the substats are for you. So I think at Sacred, it's a little bit safer to take off and place the good aspects you find on your gear, not to mention the higher tier difficulty, the more legendaries you're gonna get thrown at you and you'll have more chances to get more of those high rolled legendary aspects. So I definitely think this would be the time to kind of set up the build the way you want, use all the legendary aspects that you like, and just kind of get comfortable with the way you're gonna set up your build, and then start looking for new legendaries. Say, I'd be looking for another legendary that has this effect, and if I found one that had another really high roll, maybe I'd hold on to that one for the next tier of items I get. But Sacred, good time to start setting up your build for sure. And then the last thing for this section is looking at skill gems. So you can obviously throw gems in gear early on, that's never a bad thing. You're going to be at low tier ones, and as you start leveling up, you'll start getting access to different ones. As you can see, these chipped ones are at level 20, and then you've got ones at level 40. And then I want to say there's a tier at level maybe 60. I, I can't remember exactly when the next tier up is, but every once in a while through the leveling, you'll gain access to a new tier, and you don't waste them. You can unsocket or break down gear to return the gems, so it's never a waste to throw them in gear. But the general rule I use for gems, unless I know specifically what my build is doing, is you want skulls and all of the jewelry, because armor applies to all damage types, it seems, and so just more armor is always a good thing, so highest level skulls you have, throw them in your jewelry, and then armor and main hand offhand is where it gets slightly more complicated, though still not that bad. So the armor will vary a lot from build to build. There is the amethyst, which are damage taken over time reduction. That's not bad. I really haven't seen many people use it, and I haven't found a need to use that because there's not tons of enemies in the game that do dot damage. So it is a little bit circumstantial. But a lot of characters, I know Druid, uh, I want to say Barb, maybe a little bit on some Necromancers, use uh, Fortified or Fortification. So using a lot of Sapphires that add damage reduction while Fortified, 
that can be really strong for your tankiness because once again it is just a percent damage reduction and while fortified appeared while looking in my stats to apply as soon as I had any fortification not just when you have more than where your total health is fortified has kind of a, a weird system on how it works but anyway you'll almost always have the fortify if you have any way of generating it therefore the sapphire would apply its damage reduction while fortified most of the time and so that's a very net positive use of your gem slots so if you have ran fortification dump a bunch of those in your armor for a lot more damage resistance if you're not exactly sure what you should use for your build rubies are never a bad idea because they simply give you percentage maximum life and more life is never a bad thing so if you're not sure go with the rubies the main hand and off hand is going to be another one that is circumstantial to what your build is doing for me again assuming that these shadow things do damage over time i've been putting damage over time in to try and scale that there's also critical strike to crowd controlled enemies this one is good for a lot of damage based builds because there's a lot that encompasses within crowd controlled like slowed stunned frozen uh dazed and there's simply some that say immobilized and i do believe that almost all of those if not all of those will count for the while wow crowd controlled so this is just a very general give you more critical strike damage so that's never a bad thing the skulls are not amazing they're simply a little bit of life on kill i wouldn't recommend using them in your main hand and off hand same thing with rubies uh overpower is kind of a cool effect and some builds make use of it more than others such as uh, i have a pulverized druid that's quite a high level and so i get quite a bit of overpowered attacks using him but it is still a little bit inconsistent so i definitely wouldn't be using these but say you really like getting those big juicy overpowered hits then more rubies could work well for you it's not my top choice i would definitely stick with the uh sapphires for the critical strike to crowd controlled but you can do as you please there's also critical strike to vulnerable enemies which is pretty solid though it's basically the same thing as the critical strike to damage controlled so main difference is one's vulnerable one is a lot of other things so if you very reliably place vulnerable on enemies emeralds can be perfectly fine to use if you're not sure or don't think you have it up consistently i'd definitely go with the sapphires just because that's a more general purpose and i haven't really seen much else used in the gear slots there so i definitely think that'd be a good way to set up your gems and just a quick recap for general purpose skulls and jewelry sapphires or rubies in your armor depending on if you fortify and then sapphire or emerald in your weapon and offhand depending on your build so we've moved up into a little more complicated stuff i'm hoping i explained it well enough to help you guys understand and have a better idea of what you're looking at but now we're going to move in to world tier 4 which is quite a ways into the game anywhere from like level 60 to 70 something just depending on how strong your build is and you'll have to do another capstone dungeon fight another boss unlock the next world tier yada yada uh, this one is pretty simple i'm not going to go crazy explaining this one as i'm only several levels into it and have only replaced a little bit of my gear with the next tier which will be ancestral on this character i don't even have an ancestral to show you yet so i will keep that one simpler as by the time you reach that you're probably going to understand gearing as well as i do and there's not a point to really jump into way too many details with this but it's going to repeat itself a lot like world tier 3 where you're going to get ancestral gear it'll have a stronger base stats stronger sub stats and you're kind of just going to copy what you did at tier 3 where look for better main stat look for better sub stats swap it out try to find better legendary aspects with the higher rolls put those on and by that time you're probably going to have a fairly structured build going on where you have all the legendary aspects you need that probably you followed from a guide or maybe you built it yourself along the way but either way it's going to be pretty much just a big copy of what you did at tier 3 but with higher stats and you're going to start 
possibly finding some unique items which can have pretty cool effects that you might build around. But either way, the only major difference I would say looking at moving into Ancestral and how you upgrade from Ancestral is maybe start giving yourself the rule of looking for three positive substats instead of just two before deciding that piece is worth it. And you're definitely going to want to narrow in on what substats you want to build a lot. So like for me, I'm looking for a lot of just the damage reduction, damage reduction from distant. I'm looking for like damage over time, uh, damage to crowd controlled, damage to stunned as I have a thing going on that makes the dark damage have a chance to stun. So you just want to look for those specific stats that you want to really build up to get your setup doing a lot more damage or being a lot more tanky. But as I said, World Tier 4 is going to be very similar to what you did at Tier 3, just with a lot more stats to take into account, and having to try and get better and better, more perfect rolls on your gear. But I think everything we've gone over today should give you a pretty good idea of how to just move through the leveling process of the game, and kind of just simply build up your gear, get a little stronger as you move along, and just kind of get you up there and clearing some content. Well, it felt like a bit of a mess recording, but I'm hoping I was able to convey how I do the gearing process through leveling a character up, and I hope a lot of these little tips and tricks and how I do these can really help you or make the experience smoother for you, as I'd really like to see people have an easier time and enjoy the game more instead of having underpowered builds and not being able to do very much, or just simply struggling because they didn't understand gear. I want everyone to have a good time, so I'm hoping I was able to help you guys today. I really appreciate you checking out the video. If you found anything helpful in it, consider giving me a like and a sub as I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.